Dawn breaks over the Kolu River in the Sal forest of Uttarakhand. This loud call belongs to the great slaty woodpecker. The largest surviving woodpecker in the world. This family of four has emerged from its roost at the crack of dawn. They settle on a bare branch and chatter away, planning a full day of roving and foraging. Sal forests are a favourite of these boisterous and social woodpeckers. But even though the sal forest is one of the most significant habitats of Uttarakhand, the great slaty woodpecker is a rare find. Dr. Raman Kumar has spent over two decades exploring the ecological relationship between these birds and their habitat. So the great slaty woodpecker is the largest uh, surviving woodpecker in the world and uh, it's about 50 centimeters in length. Imagine uh, a woodpecker of this size would naturally require trees of proportionate size for it to be able to build cavities in. So it's a wide-ranging woodpecker, but uh, it has a preference for this kind of forest which are known as dipterocarp forests. And sal is a dipterocarp, which means the trees which have winged fruit. Since the great slaty has evolved to specialize on dipterocarps, so sal is the most widespread dipterocarp we have. The great slaty woodpecker is an old growth specialist. It prefers areas which have uh, old sal trees and naturally those areas are a very tiny proportion of all the sal forests we have. It's not only the great slaty woodpecker. A sal forest nurtures a wild variety of creatures, rare as well as common. Nestled between the Kobit and Rajaji National Parks, straddling Garhwal and Kumau regions of Uttarakhand, lie the rich sal forests of Lansdowne Division. Home to over 600 species of birds, more than 50 species of mammals, and 25 species of reptiles, the sal forest is a habitat that has evolved around the great sal tree. From the Asiatic elephant and the Royal Bengal tiger to the piculate, probably the smallest woodpecker in the world, the sal forest is a complex ecosystem that has evolved over millennia. Freshwater rivulets crisscross the forest, creating a thriving ecosystem abuzz with life. A group of Maganza ducks dive to catch a prized Mahasir. Downstream, a golden jackal has a similar breakfast plan. A crested kingfisher goes about its morning hunt. Bull elephants display their dominance over one another to earn the right to join a family.
large herds of nomadic mammals need the safety of healthy, balanced and contiguous habitats to survive and thrive. The Saal forest is one such perfect habitat. These tropical moist deciduous forests are mainly distributed along the foothills of the Himalayas from Assam to Punjab. Stretches are also found in West Bengal, Central India and Odisha. The Saal belongs to an ancient family of very tall trees. It is the dominant species of any Saal forest. The giant stands like a sentinel, providing shelter and nourishment to its residents. The Saal trees are a favourite with nature's most prolific engineers, the woodpeckers. These drillers play a significant role in keeping these forests healthy. There are at least 15 different kinds of woodpeckers in the Saal forest of northern India. They are one of the few creatures which have the ability to make cavities in trees. Cavities are a much sought after resource by a lot of birds and animals and reptiles as well. And in a season, a woodpecker has to build a cavity to both nest and to roost. A woodpecker ends up building multiple cavities in a year. If you have a variety of woodpeckers ranging from a small one to a large one, you can imagine the variety of the size of the cavities they are creating in a forest and uh, the variety of creatures which in turn depend on these cavities for their existence. A healthy population of woodpeckers means a healthy, flourishing forest. The woodpeckers have evolved along with the sal. It's natural and the relationship are many millennia old. Sal uh, offers them a lot of resources. And they are primarily insectivorous. So the, for example, the bark of the sal has such a structure that it hides a lot of insects, which end up being food for woodpeckers. Woodpeckers are also beneficial to sal forests because they keep explosion of insect populations under control. At first glance, these forests look untouched. But a closer look reveals another story. These forests which we look around, they are called pristine and good forests, but they are intensively managed. I mean, they have been manipulated a lot in the past. And that's what gives them their regimented structure. Nature doesn't prefer a manicured forest or a manicured garden. It's wild. So that means you have different kinds of species occurring together, not this monoculture. The first thing which humans tend to do is to uh, reduce the diversity. So the other trees which are associates of sal have been systematically removed. So as to give us a pure sal crop. The other thing which uh, makes a lot of difference is the age profile. If you have individuals of the same age together, then only certain kinds of wildlife or birds can benefit from that. In a natural forest, all ages should be present. Sal is so slow growing that it takes decades or even centuries to reattain that natural state. On a very broad scale, sal suffers from a lack of regeneration. And of course, that means that the future is in question. साल, सौ साल खड़ा, सौ साल पड़ा, सौ साल सड़ा। This tree has taken much more than hundred years to attain its full glory. Around it, life has evolved and found protection. 
even after it dies it remains standing and continues to give shelter and once it falls it provides sustenance to small organisms these forests are not just collection of sal trees but a community nurturing and protecting each other destroying sal trees has everlasting repercussions trying to restore an ecosystem may relieve wounds of the past but it cannot recreate the balance of intricate relationships created over centuries in a natural habitat